Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. Stu Rich and Mike Wood here to take a look at the Rose Hill Gardens card this weekend. Of course, it's the meeting transferred from Hawkesbury, but there's plenty of good racing on offer, plenty of best bets coming your way. A lot of value in there as well. And, well, Mike, horse racing, how good is it? The sport of kings just keeping everyone sane at this time. Yeah, the great game has lifted over the last few weeks. Thank God the carnival's kept going. Difficult times for people at home. True. But if you're involved with horse racing, so good to watch it every single day. Thanks to so many people who are involved in horse racing, Racing South Wales, the ATC, yep. and especially Sky Racing. We see what goes on behind the scenes. It's a tough job, isn't it, Stuart? It absolutely would be, mate. But I'll tell you what, from the couch, it's been a little bit of a different story, hasn't it? The carnival's been and gone. It certainly has. But the beers and peanuts have been flowing on the couch, <laughs> Mike. And I'll tell you what, it's good to see a few of my favourites have a few wins over the carnival as well. Honest and tough for Seeker and good old Farnan in the slipper. What a carnival it's you been. You nailed the slipper right away game. Who came second? And for Seeker, she's so tough. If so many highlights, the one that I liked. Yeah. Dannon Premium, a high-class Japanese galloper, hitting the Randwick Rise and absolutely hitting the wall. Tough Sydney tracks in the autumn are really hard, aren't they, Stu? They sure are. And we're going to check the conditions for Rose Hill this weekend. So let's focus on that now, Mike. We are railing the true position. And how about this beautiful autumn weather? This is a very different set of conditions <laughs> on a Saturday. Rail through, good track, maybe even a good three if they don't irrigate. It's a bit of sun around. We think it's going to be a fair bias as well. Yep. Great betting on Saturday to come back to. Yeah, let's hope for a nice fair track. And, of course, we're looking at five key races this weekend, Mike. Obviously an eight-race card, so not the nine. What are the five we're looking at? I like most of them. There's, there are some very tricky races on the card, though. Yep. Race one, the two-odd race. That's a good betting race. Race three, very, very open, but we might have edge of the odds. And race four, six and seven, three features. I think race seven might be the trickiest on the card. Yeah, that looks an absolute toughie. The Gold Cup, but it's the two-year-olds you say we're going to kick things off with. I like the two-year-olds. So let's get the races started for Rose Hill on Saturday. Race number one. And looking at the market, it's Rock My Wand on top. Well supported, $2.70 into $2.50. The real wet track type. Getting way back last time, but of course it's got the away game form. Foreman Terra on the second line of betting into $3.20. Too strong for Rousseau at Warwick Farm. Out to the 1,400 metres here. There's Rousseau at $5 coming through the same race. Or so you think, Colt. Safiano, $8.50. Good late splits on debut. Looking a bit of overs here, $8.50. And the Defiant one, $9.50 with the Geelong form coming through, Mike. But Rock My Wand, this is some serious form. This is away game form. Very good form, away game form. Talk about carnival highlights. I love this filly. I wish she was racing on the Saturday, but she is racing again soon. Can oh, you no, believe it's good? Stu? Rock My Wand is the one we're looking at. She comes to the outside. We talked about these testing ramic conditions. She runs on very, very well late in very high grade. This is definitely the highest form rating in the race. But, like you said, Stu, in the market preview, she's a lightly framed type that loves wet track. She's a small squibby thing, yeah, I yeah. think. Dry Rose Hill, very different story on Saturday. OK, so we might be seeing that. A few of these tra wet track types are potentially coming off the wet at Randwick and, of course, Rose Hill, but getting back to a dry Rose Hill. favourite, I can call it now. All right, well, let's have a look at some midweek form here. Warwick Farm, we're looking at Form and Terra and Rousseau. Of course, this is another one, isn't it? Off the heavy eight, coming to the dry Rose Hill Gardens this week. And, importantly, 12 to 1,400. Is this going to suit some of these? I think it will. The track, we just don't know coming to Saturday for both these horses. Form and Terra's performed on good before. Yeah. Rousseau's on debut, but they both will definitely love the 1,400 metres. Foreman Terra was big odds this day. He was too strong. Rousseau drifted in the market a little bit. Okay. A big striding son of So You think he gets to his home track on Saturday. He finds the line very well. Yeah, I like the way it just kept attacking the line there at the finish. All right, well, it's key factors time. Keep your eye on the top right-hand side of the screen as we run our mini race for race number one at Rose Hill Gardens this week. And, Mike, Rock My Wand has got the gold for four. There's so much data. Can I remember how to do this, Stu? Rock My Wand. Yep, she's going well. I'll back you in, mate. Dollar one, you're all through all over this progression. Who's got that? Lots with upside. Rousseau's got upside. Safiano definitely upside. The defiant one up from Melbourne, if you say so. He's not too bad. And Cordyceps Miracle, his dam came fifth in the Melbourne Cup. He's got upside too. All right, you've done your homework as usual, Mike. A lot of gold there for those not in the market, but here's a lot of gold for those in distance for the yeah, market. They've, they've targeted this race for a reason. Most of them, the defined one may be okay, but it's a big step in distance, second up. Okay, so it's Rock My Wand out in front from Foreman Terra and the Rousseau. We've got it. Market order here, Mike. Track conditions, that's helping some of these others. Yeah, no magic for Rock My Wand on a dry track. Most of them should be fine, but she will not like it, I'm pretty sure. All right, well, can the favourite level up with a good position in run. Small fields should be okay. Okay, so it's Foreman Terra and Rousseau on top there by a length from the favourite Rock My Wand and Mike. Well, we've got two here, so let's have a look where <laughs> we're going to play for a bet because 
Straight first show back. First bat back. The favourite's not on top. I know where this is going, but which one of those two are we going to pick as a bet, mate? Because I'm not sure from seeing those ratings. But one's $5, one's $3.20. I've got a feeling I know which way you're headed here, Mike. The time was good. The ratings are good. I don't like the favourite. It's a toss of the coin, but the odds are better. <laughs> you picked it. He's a French artist. My wife had to remind me of that. Rousseau. Ah, more He's an each way bet, I think. He should love the 1,400 metres. He's the first best bet back. OK, Rousseau there for us in race number one to get off to a good start on Saturday. Now it's up to race number three. It's a benchmark 78 handicap. Let's have a look at the market now. And it's Grand Piano of two dominant wins and, of course, a big run in the Carbine Club in Group 3 level. Back to Ben. Benchmark 78 here, well placed and well supported. Word for word, $9, just the one win. Not far away fresh though, but it is just that one from 11 that's a little bit concerning. McCormack, well here's a lot of provincial championships form. It was wide in that race, but draws nicely here. A few others coming through the race. We've got Oxford Tycoon, Moana Jewel. Of course, Juventus has gone on, bolting it at the Kenzo with 60 kilos. But a lot of these coming through the Newcastle qualifier. Yeah, mark. some decent form lines, some even form lines. This is probably the best form line though, the Carbine Club stakes. I think it was a really strong addition to the Carbine Club Stakes yeah. this year. Entente leading and doing pretty well. He went on to run second next start. Um, Canaan form, it's very strong form, isn't it, Graham? Yeah, Canaan was well favoured in the market this day. Looked a little bit disappointing, but I think his form rating is OK. The big question is, though, Stu, these heavy track Ramwick mm, runs. Here's another one. Can they back them up next start? It's a testing. Te it's a test for these young horses, isn't it? It is, and I mean this horse. Well, it was pretty well enough position this day, but where's it going to get to in this big field on the weekend? Bad barrier, dry track. It's never won on dry before. Like I said, it is the best form rating, but there are lots of questions. All these afterthought races. Okay, well there's one replay in the race, and of course we've got to have a look at some of the provincial championships form. Let's have a look at one here. This is odds on Saturday, but Mike, you've gone back to 26 of January. This is a race at Wyong. We're looking at designated here. It was well supported this day. 460 to 370. Dry track, 1600 metres. He wasn't pushed at all in the provincial championships. He hates the wet. Ah. He was well back. The horse that comes second this day came out and got beaten a pimple on a Friday night Can Canterbury meeting. Yeah. The form ratings are very good. And the money's already come, Stu. OK, so many of these wet track, dry track turnarounds potentially this weekend. So let's have a look at this race now from a key, pa key factors perspective and see who comes out on top. Mike, Grand Piano's got all the form and it's the one they've got to catch. This one will test me, but he's already there on form, Grand Piano. Well, look at all these others lined up in behind. We've got a race here, Mike. Who's got progression? Can he hold his form? That's the question. Word for word, second up for all. They always improve, but how much? Impactful. He's got upside. And Don and Kim, a big grinding type, he's better third up. OK, still plenty here, Mike. Distance, who's this suiting? Maybe 16 would have been better for Don and Kim. It'll give him a gold bar for 14 to 15. OK, of course, the favourite can't go ahead anymore. What about the track conditions? Yeah, the favourite's never won on good. Word for word should be OK. Juventus, jet ski above and beyond, they're fine. McCormick, Moana Jill, Oxford Tycoon, maybe slightly better wet from the provincial championships. Have a look at this race, Mike. You've got two here at massive odds. You've entered <laughs> sort of above and beyond. And hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven top raiters. Come on, mate. You're I'm not even reading that out just to fill the gap position in run. Look at that. OK, so you're saying after all that, mate, we don't really have much of a thought Good in this race. Darren Flindell. All right, well, let's, we no need idea. a tip. So let's try and at least give the viewers a tip, Mike. <laughs> Jeez. Hang on, mate. I've never seen this on Key Factors before, <laughs> mate. They're all across the page. What's the one at biggest odds? Designated. That's 21, we saw that. Mr Reckless 19, where are we going? That is an impossible market to frame. <laughs> Good luck to the guys and girls at the tab for trying to frame a market. I've got no idea which way to look. But designated, we said. Yep. Back to a dry track, big odds. He was right up there. And Sal Sonic was right there at big odds as well. We've got no idea who's going to win, so you have to play odds. Clearly, it's a race for value. Designated South Sonic at the big double-figure odds there in race number three. Stick around after the break. Three more coming your way, including the features. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. It's time for a look at the Hawkesbury Crown now. What a race this is going to be. Over the 1,300 metres, Group 3 level for the Phillies and Mares, and, of course, Josh Parr looking to make it four wins in the event after riding Serenissima, Pecans and Irathea. But he won't be doing it on this year due to a double booking, but it's in her time. $3.60, well supported, having a 31st start, potential final run from Ben Smith to Chris Lees, the Galaxy to Sydney 
stakes are lightning. She's done it all. Bangkok, $4.80. Good money as well. Hit the line well behind White Moss. We've got Multaja resuming, $8.50. Arathea, last race was this time last year in the same race, of course, $9.50. And Nantali, $12 resuming. Mike, in her time, she's been one of your favourite horses oh, of all time. Why is that? Don't, because well, I love her. She's on pace, <laughs> she's tough, she fights hard. Don't retire in her time. Can I please win loads on the weekend? Then I can buy her at the Broodmurst Hour and maybe give her a couple more runs if she wants to in her nice. time. Hallmark stark. Hallmark stakes. I'm too excited. Yep. Last week, squeezed out of the jump. She wasn't slow to jump. She jumped midfield mm. and she was squeezed out. The tempo was only steady, so she had absolutely no chance. She comes to the outside. She runs home very well and gets right past a horse called Deprived. She's giving him a start. Yeah, she's just so, so classy. And, of course, that day, Mike, Opie, you say, didn't miss the start. We've got Abdullah riding four of the last five and Bowman's having his first ride this weekend. Bowman for finale. What a great job he is. He, she beat White Moss and the TJ Smith. That's an important form reference coming to this replay, Stu. All right, well, let's have a look. April 11, obviously only a couple of weeks ago, Mike. Bangkok, third up this day, chasing some pretty decent horses in White Moss and and of course, the tough for Seeker. It's obviously one of those flashing light horses, Mike. It's running well. Where is it placed against in her time? It's going very well, isn't it? Three starts is preparation. It's been smashing the line. You've got to love that about the horse. Yeah. I love the way it's parading as well. It's a little bit stronger and more muscular in the yard, but White Moss covers it. It does like a heavy track. It's damn loved a heavy track as well. And even on ratings out of that run, yep. it's behind in her time. OK, interesting. Well, she's such a great horse in her time. I'm expecting to see plenty of form for her in the key factors. As we get the race started, Mike, there she is out in front. She's too good. Light her up. All right, so there, she's the one they've got to catch. Well, she might not have progression, Mike. Who does? Well, yeah, she, at last start, if she progressed, you'd be <laughs> surprised, wouldn't you? The rest, OK. A couple of fresh horses. Definitely watches in the yard. OK, but they've still got a lot to chase here and in her time. Distance. OK, so a couple of these like it. Yeah, wet track 14 would have been better for Bangkok, but 13 helps. Erythea back to 13 is definitely good. Sweet Scandal back to 13 helps, but she's very deep in her prep now. All right, she's holding them off, but she likes a dry track a bit better. Yeah, most of them OK. Bangkok, I don't think she likes it, but the money's still coming. OK, all right, so maybe that is an interesting key factor. What about position run? There she goes. She's oh, off. It's a beautiful barrier, isn't it? Erythea can go forward in her time. She can jump midfield and Bowman can just push forward. Light up in her time. Ah, oh, well, there she is. She's streeted clear by a couple of lengths. I'm pretty sure I could have pre <laughs> predicted that from the start, no Mike. I know she's one of your favourites. But, look, it's time for a punt. Now, this is the question. $3.60 for a horse of her yes. capability. Yes. She's out by two lengths. Yes. Do we need to say any more? Yes. No. Yes, <laughs> This Lexic looks different stable change and the format of the Adelaide runs only fair. Yep. Sweet scandal. I love the mare. She's so tough. She's been stuck wide. Her barrier trial was only OK. And she's so deep in her preparation. Bangkok likes wet tracks. Multaja drawn wide first up. In her time, yes. please, please turn up. Just deliver your normal form rating and you will win by two or three. Just turn up in her time. That's all we Simple. want you to do and we'll get that win. Let's get on to race six now. Of course, it's the Hawkesbury Guineas, 1,400 metres, Group 3 level for the three-year-olds and a lot of these coming through the Arrow Field and South Pacific, but it's Ice Bath who is on top in the betting. $5. Was it the one that was going to beat IndyCar last start? Yes, it was. There's IndyCar. $5.50 on the second line. Massive runs back this preparation. Winner three from five. Now we go to the other form line. We've got 11-11 at $8. Outside barrier here, but obviously huge from the back in the Splintex race. Here's a horse with alligator blood form. Dawn Passage, $8.50. Another one coming from that race. We know this horse is high class and one that's going to be suited to the 1400. Spend, well, we know where this horse is at. It's been racing well this preparation. Bandersnatch there resuming, Mike. And, well, Ice Bath IndyCar, 11-11 Dawn Passage. Which way the form's going to go here? I don't know. It's a very good betting race. I definitely want to bet in this race. And there's some fantastic replays to watch. Mm. Let's have a look at two very, very high class, dry track, 1400 metre replays. Starting with the Magic Millions, three-year-old guineas, back on January the 11th. Alligator blood yeah. after all that drama. Just too good. But look at the margins and look at the horse in seconds to 11 11. Yep. He keeps progressing. He's a big striding type. He likes a dry track. He demolished horses two or three lengths behind. They have similar ratings to this race on Saturday. He's a great horse at his best, Jim. Well, it's always a good to take it back to such a good replay like this. I mean, Alligator Blood, another one of your favourite horses. Mate, he's just been up there and doing the best. Yeah, Nash, big decision from the wide barrier. Does he go forward like he did that day? He slotted in that day. All right, let's have a look at Dawn Passage. And, Mike, we're taking you back here. We're going, it's one run over 1,400 metres. Yes, this is the Group 1 Golden Rose. Bivouac. Yes, yes, yes. Castel Vecchio. This is pretty decent, mate. There must be reasons why he hasn't been to 1,400 metres since. But now is the time on Saturday... You do not get alongside Castelvecchio <laughs> and beat him over the last 100 metres yeah. before surge. 
unless you are a very, very good horse. His run last start was fine. His run first up, he should have won. Yep. He'll be hard to beat too. All right, not your typical Waterhouse bot runner either. It's going to be coming from the back, yeah, charging super. late super. in the day. Let's get this race started, Mike. Where is all the form here? Because it's coming from a few different places. Ice bath should have won. Stu, you haven't mentioned that mm. you backed a last start. The over's gods, Dawn mate. Dawn Passage, he's going well. He has some excuses last start. All right, so it's Ice Bath, the favourite, who they've got to catch with Dawn Passage. Mike, progression. Yeah, 11-11 can improve second up. Battleground, bit of upside, but maybe he likes the wet. OK, so Ice Bath, 11-11 levels up with Dawn Passage. So the favourites are all there in this race. Mike, what about the, tr the distance? Yeah, they can return to those peak ratings over 1,400 metres. 11-11 and Dawn Passage will love it. And Battleground, he hit the line well too. OK, so 11-11 and Dawn Passage. So it's that form line streeting ahead. Hang on, mate. Track conditions, they're going further ahead. Yeah, IndyCar, he's a lightly framed type. I think he liked the wet battleground, same, same. The rest, OK. How about these? So many coming back to the dry track with positives. It's going to be that sort of day. Position and run. Groundswell gets oh, it. Oh, he just gets that barrier that makes you want to dive in, but his last start was only OK. All right, so it's 11-11 there, and Dawn Passage streeting away from the others. Groundswell, the Mike, I tell you what, away. I have not been able to catch Groundswell since last year. He's my biggest query horse of the day, so we've got to have an interesting look at him, but it's these two you've got on top. 11-11, Dawn Passage, $8, $8.50. You've said it all night, you're taking that form line over the ice bath form Yeah, line. you've got to mention the wide barriers for those two horses. Dawn Passage... I don't think it matters so much. Yep. At 11-11, Nash has got a big decision, so we'll go. Dawn Passage's way just, but I'm backing both these runners on Saturday. All right, good stuff. Let's go through that form line there. Now it's into the Hawkesbury Gold Cup, of course, one of the features of the day. Race number seven, 1,500 metres, Group 3 under handicap conditions, and obviously most of these, a lot of these on their way to some longer trips as well, but it's Amangiri, well-supported, 6.50 into $4.80, third up, and no, this isn't a Group 1 like it was in last time. Gorwa, $7 on the second line, very genuine, loves Rose Hill, live and free, right down the bottom, $7.50 resuming, Royal Celebrations racing very well this preparation, Manolo Blahnik, interesting runner up from Melbourne, the Hariba Stakes is some good form to the 1500 metres here, Girls Tuesday, Eliferous Mask of Time, they're all there Mike, a nice open Hawkesbury Cold Cup this year. Such an open race and a lot of these horses were programmed for a 1600 metre race, don't forget. Yep. The sharp 1500 metres at Rose Hill is very different to what they, what, what they were planning for. Let's have a look at the first Good up point. run. Rose Hill, 1500 metres. Amman Geary on pace, steady tempo. She had every chance, but this is an easy race on Saturday. The two I want to point out at the back, Girl Tuesday and Unforgotten in the blue colours and the yellow colours. Very plain runs from the Waller Yard, but they can make sharp improvement to a dry track. Yeah, we've all, always got to look to that from the Waller camp, don't we? Now, look, Amon Geary, Mike, you haven't been a fan of it. It's last two runs, and it's third up this weekend. Yeah, first up, this was too tough. Second up, heavy track. Group one, like he said, this is much, much easier for her. OK, now, big, big question, and we chatted about this on Wednesday night, Mike. Manolo Blahnik, interesting runner, up from Melbourne. Right, it's been in a speed race here at Caulfield. It made up a lot of ground its last two starts. One, two, three in the run here. Is that all we've got to say? Yeah, and you don't like this horse, oh, do you? Oh, you've you made me rethink. You not to tip it. It's been at 1,600 metres before and it just peaked late, so maybe mm. 15's OK. He doesn't like a soft track. You said the leaders dominated here. Yep. The run was good. He doesn't win that much. But it's hard to knock him. That was one, two, three in run. Of course, the Hariba Stakes, we've got Diamond Effort, Vainstream, and of course, Seabrook all coming through the race. So Strong plenty of form. form. All right, let's, get this, let's get this race started. Hawkesbury Gold Cup, they're all across the page here, Mike, but it's not the favourites with the form. The great game, you never know, do you? Manolo Blanick, <laughs> Royal Celebration, Liferous Mask of Time, all going well. OK, all right, who's going to get us started with progression? The big, big question, Girl Tuesday Quiet Trial. Can yep. she improve? Unforgotten, she can improve six or seven lengths, one run to second up. She can improve big time. Another race. one of the biggest query horses, isn't oh. it? Unforgotten this weekend. Distance, Mike. No gold. I, I think Royal Celebration should like it, the 1,500 metres, but the rest are questions. Like they said, they were going for the mile. Yeah, interesting. OK, what about the track conditions? Dry track, track conditions, who's the favourite? Aliferous, bit of a question. Mask of time, definitely a question. Archidemus, he likes a wet track. OK, so it's Manolo Blahnik, the query horse, out on top. Mike, position and run. A few of them get close. Yeah, Abdullah can just rev up Amangiri, go hard in a lead and be hard to run down. Girl Tuesday with Nash. Could follow her through. OK, so Amangiri surges late, but it's not enough to catch Manolo Blahnik. We saw the replays, Mike. Let's have a look now to see where we're heading in this race. I mean, Amangiri is so, so strong as favourite. You know it's going to be around the mark, but you've found an edge here for Manolo Blahnik. I found an edge on a Thursday night, but I am not betting until Saturday <laughs> afternoon, five minutes before the race. There are so many Waller runners yeah. that I want to watch in the yard <laughs> before I have a bet. 
Manolo Blahnik each way, maybe a place on a Thursday night. Yep. But otherwise, wait for a late bet. All right, we're waiting for the yard on Saturday, but it's Manolo Blahnik there in the Gold Cup. There's a look at five big races this weekend. Let's stick around after the break. $100 hot seat and, of course, our charity multi coming your way. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. It's been a good first show back, Mike. We've had a look at five big races, but of course there's only three others on the card. So if we found those five, what are the other three, mate? We'll Come make, on. We'll make the most of these eight first show back. Rousseau, yes. $5. We talked about him. Lure me in. It's a tough race, mm -hmm. but he can win at eight bucks. Designated 21, a great roughie in her time. She just wins race four. I like it. Then I buy her at the sales after I have a massive bet. <laughs> Villamai on pace, hard to run down. Dawn Passage. He'll be sweeping late. Benolo Blanick, maybe place for each way. And True Detective, the money's coming for him. Very hard to beat, Stu. All right, so some nice each way odds in there. And, of course, a couple of faves as well. Mike, $100 hot seat time. I was going to say for those heading out to Rose Hill Gardens this weekend, yeah. what are they going to do? But for those punters from the couch or wherever they may be, yeah. 100 bucks. how are they playing with it this weekend? Get your tab app out, deposit the 100 bucks, and bet on these horses. $10 each way, Rousseau. He'll be so hard to beat. We don't like the favourite. Designated South Sonic in a very, very, very open race. Three in her time just There wins. she is. OK. Race 6, 11-11 <laughs> eleven, eleven, if Nash gives him a good ride. And Dawn Passage will run top three. Very hard to beat at 8.50. All right, let's try and lift that 2020 profit now that we're back on after the carnival, Mike. And, well, let's take you to the 2020 charity bet. Of course, we're back to the Red Shield charity appeal. After the carnival, Mike, let's start with a multi in her time. Come on, I've got to give this to you, mate. You've been spruiking it all night. Let's put her in there for the win, $3.60. Amangiri for the place. It's just going to be on pace. It's going to be right there, $2.10. That's a steal. Let's multi that up at $7.60. And, of course, the Quinella in this race. Let's take that form. Dawn Passage, we saw the replay. That was good. It's classy. 11-11. Well, there's alligator blood form. An ice bath. Well, mate, I needed an ice bath after being on it at 21 bucks last start. Yeah, we'll be sitting <laughs> on the couch Saturday afternoon. Your favourite horse, my two favourite horses having a big quinella on those three. Good bets, Jim. Yeah, well, look, it's been a good show from us tonight. We hope you're going to appreciate all the races this weekend. Head to theraceguide.com.au for all your feature profiling for the Rose Hill Straight. That's it from us. See you again next week. Enjoy the racing on Saturday.